There we go. Okay, well, let's get started again. Thank you guys so much for joining. Uh, my name is uh, Don Barnetson, and I'm here to talk about uh, coherent optics, um, which uh, hopefully some of you are familiar with. If you're not, I'll do a brief introduction. So maybe a, a quick introduction to Credo for those of you who don't know us. Credo is a, a leading manufacturer of interconnect. Uh, we design our own CERTES, we build uh, DSPs for optical modules, we build active electrical cables, um, um, and we build chiplets, uh, which uh, maybe is an interesting discussion as well. But today I'm here to talk specifically about coherent optics and some of the challenges our customers have run in in deploying these. So first of all, what are coherent pluggable optics? So these are long range pluggable optics that fit in standard form factors that we're all accustomed to that allow you to go beyond the building. Uh, standard optics typically about two kilometers. These allow you to go 80 kilometers, 500 kilometers plus. These displace the transponders that people have previously used, these giant boxes that tend to be quite proprietary and outrageously expensive with something that is tiny, um, meant to be fully standards based and easy to use. An interesting side note about this, coherent optics actually make an excellent dark fiber tester for those of you who've deployed a lot of dark fiber. I'll talk about uh, what one of our customers is doing with coherent optics and some of the products that we've helped them enable. But for folks who've laid a lot of dark fiber, have never lit it up, you can actually use these low cost modules to test and qualify your fiber before you deploy a link to customers. So the ecosystem here are standards based form factors, typically QSFP, QSFP DD and OSFP. Those come with an AWI compliant electrical interface, what we might describe as a chip to module interface, which makes this all a lot easier. These coherent modules consume a lot more power than standard data center optics, um, uh, up to about 32 watts in the 800 gig generation that we're starting to deploy now. That's required us to tweak the form factors a little bit. Um, so new cooling form factors, which have extra features to be able to dissipate this power. For those of you who've worked with pluggable optics before, the control plane is often the most difficult part of pluggable optics because it's a sort of a legacy spec that's been built on and built on and built on. And we continued that with the uh, coherent optics. So we added another 32 pages of control plane in the coherent SEMA specification that is meant to be standardized and sits on top. In addition, a lot of coherent uh, optics manufacturers have many, many um, uh, user-defined pages that are necessary in order to use the product. So we're still in the early stages, which makes uh, deployment uh, a little bit challenging. So the key question is, if you just plug these into your switch, why don't they always just work? And so this is the core challenge. Um, a lot of our customers are using uh, legacy switches. Uh, you know, for us, that would be a 400 gig small buffer Tomahawk 3 class switches. Those weren't really designed with these modules in mind. So they often don't have enough power and enough cooling to be able to support um, an entire switch full of these modules. That means you need to leave some of the ports empty or you have to plug in a lower uh, throughput module, maybe a 100 gig module into a 400 gig port. That creates some economic challenges because port costs for those switches are somewhere between $300 and $3,000, depending on whether you're using a sort of a small buffer open switch or a, a large buffer, uh, more proprietary switch. Software is the largest headache. These CSEMIS commands are new and they're not very consistently implemented by the module manufacturers. Support for CCMIS is also not very consistently implemented in the OSs. For example, Sonic does not yet have full support for CCMIS. Most of the um, proprietary OSs, if you were to get a, uh, an OEM switch, also don't yet have full support for this. And then another sort of frustrating issue is if you're getting a, a proprietary or an OEM OS, they often have what I would describe as allow lists. We used to call these white lists. Um, and so these mod module manufacturers only allow tested, qualified, in some cases, uh, bundled modules to work with their, uh, with their switch equipment, um, which prevents you from using the open ecosystem. That can be very frustrating. So one of our large uh, service providers in the US, maybe the largest uh, fixed line service provider in the US, came to us and said, what if we could build a patch panel but for pluggables? We love patch panels that work for RJ45, for traditional copper, for optics. Could we do that for pluggables? Could we build a box that looks like a switch, but it doesn't have any switch silicon in it? And so that, uh, that box would be really low cost. It wouldn't touch the high speed bus, so it doesn't have any switch silicon in it. It would simply allow you to connect two pluggables to each other, and they form a direct link. But this box would be completely open. It would provide the power and cooling support that you need. It would give you a baseline set of drivers that support all the CMOS and CCMIS commands with an open OS so that you could build anything you want on top of that. And then it would give you a nice streaming northbound interface. So you could use IPMI, G GPRC, whatever you want to use in that case. And so the, the concept here is that you can 
do this really, really easily. And if you could do that, you could enable all sorts of interesting use cases. And so you could imagine if you had that uh, gray switch at the bottom, that could be your standard switch. And maybe that connects back using Credo's active electrical cables or some other interconnect. And you want to plug in all of these fancy optics to it. So the, uh, the blue uh, 400 gig ZR plus, you know, aren't otherwise powerable or controllable. Well, you can use an AEC to remote that up onto this pluggable patch panel, and then you can power and control it. You can plug in EDFA amplifiers, which otherwise burn expensive ports uh, in your switcher router. You can also do breakout cases. So you can consume a 400 gig port and use an AEC to break out to four 100 gig ports and then plug in whatever you'd like. And so it creates an ecosystem that separates the ZR optic from the switch and it really allows routers to, uh, to just route in this case. So the product that we built here, uh, we call it our pluggable patch panel or a P3, and you can definitely come by the Stordis booth out on the show floor and have a look. And so this is a 32-port QSFP DD product. It's designed to have the top row uh, plugged with coherent or other optics that you want, and the bottom row plugged with local interconnect. So you can certainly use the active electrical cables from Credo. You could also use any other type of uh, chip-to-module compliant interconnect. You can use an AOC or something else. Uh, it's designed to support a whole lot of power, so 25 watts per port in that top row to, uh, to get you up to the QSF PDD thermal limit. Um, it's a completely open OS. If you were here earlier in the day, you talked to, we talked about uh, open BMC. So we have a, an open BMC uh, ecosystem that runs on this, and we'll simply give you the whole repo. Uh, everything, all the software is open sourced. So you can take it, you can use it as is, or you can modify it to your heart's delight, and we can have service providers uh, in our ecosystem support that to you. It supports DC and AC versions, and it, it fits in really nicely. So one of the things I, I promised to talk about was um, uh, some use cases for this. So the, obviously the, uh, the coherent interconnect use case was interesting, but what really surprised us was the service provider decided to use this as a dark fiber tester. So previously, if they wanted to deploy some dark fiber, they would call their favorite um, uh, vendor, Sienna, and Sienna would roll a truck out once they had enough dark fiber to test, and they would put a tester on both ends of this, and uh, they would test the fiber um, and characterize it, and then 18 months later, they would have a dark fiber that's actually ready to deploy. So with this pluggable patch panel, you can simply use a coherent optic on each side and plug it into the P3, and you can test that in real time, or in fact, you can be running that test all the time. You can bring the deployment time on dark fiber down to one month or perhaps even much less than that. So the use cases for this get interesting. We've also had some folks um, in the AI space who've made um, um, uh, decisions on their interconnect which didn't scale. And so folks need to get from a 100 gig to a 400 gig to an 800 gig. Uh, in the US, you know, we go to Home Depot and sort of have uh, adapter monsters that we build together when we have plumbing that doesn't fit. Turns out the P3 can be an effective use case for those adapter monsters so we can help scale from 100 gig to 400 gig to 800 gig at extremely low cost. So I have a call to action. Um, Core 400 gig switches and rotors are super cost effective. And so for service providers, moving to a 400 gig core makes a ton of sense. Um, you can really piggyback on everything that's happened in the hyperscale infrastructure here. You can use the open OSs, which is great. Coherent pluggable optics are also amazing. They're really low cost. They're broadly available from multiple vendors, and they give you long range connectivity to 500 kilometers. The P3 is a piece that allows you to use these two pieces together. We can give you complete freedom to combine these coherent pluggables with, with the hardware and network operating system of your choice. Really let the routers route. If you want to use an OEM uh, switch, you certainly can. Uh, it will recognize the AECs, and then the P3 can do whatever you'd like it to do. So please come by our booth, uh, talk to Credo, talk to myself or uh, Jay who's here, or the Stortus team who, uh, who helps represent us in Europe. And there's lots of additional information. Um, this is up on the OCP marketplace. Um, there's a, a, a wonderful um, a release that we did recently, or you guys can just reach out to me directly. I'm, uh, I'm San Jose based. Thank you guys so much. Any questions for me? Otherwise, uh, please.